act two, scene two of Julius Caesar is what we are going to focus on in this video. We'll do it in two parts. Uh, this is set in Caesar's house because we have seen in act two, scene one, which is probably the most important scene uh, in terms of the conspiracy that has been hatched or that is being hatched to eliminate, to overthrow Julius Caesar. Now, what is Caesar going through? That's what Shakespeare is going to talk about in act two, scene two. That's what he's showing us now. Uh, interestingly, it starts with thunder and lightning. Okay, so the atmospheric conditions are such that they convey a sense of unrest, a sense of disturbance that everything is not perfectly all right. Caesar enters in his nightgown. So it is the time of night. As we know, Caesar says, nor heaven nor earth have been at peace tonight. Thrice hath Calpurnia in her sleep cried out, help, oh, they murder Caesar who is within. So he says, neither the sky nor the earth have been at peace. They have not been peaceful all uh, throughout the night. And in her sleep, Calpurnia, that is his wife, has cried out thrice, saying, help, oh, they are murdering Caesar. So Calpurnia is imagining, is dreaming of the fact that they are out to murder Julius Caesar. That is her big fear. Let me just increase the size of it. Yeah. Okay, that is her big fear that people are out to murder Julius Caesar. And that is something which Julius Caesar has also heard while she was asleep. At that point in time, a servant enters and Caesar says, go bid the priests do present sacrifice and bring me their opinions of success. Now, this kind of indicates and shows and further reinforces Julius Caesar's superstitious side. So he's asking the servant to go and tell the priest to immediately present means immediate present means immediately perform present sacrifice to uh, to perform to immediately sacrifice and bring me their opinions of success to uh, to perform a sacrifice to the gods and bring me their interpretations of the results you know of the animal that they would sacrifice i want it to be interpreted so it shows a certain superstitious side at that point in time calpurnia enters the scene she says what mean you caesar think you to walk forth you shall not stir out of your house today so she says, what is it that you're thinking you will not step out of home today Aaj tum ghar chodkar bahar nahi jaoge. caesar says caesar will go out forth caesar shall forth means Caesar will certainly go out. The things that threaten me never looked but on my back. When they shall see the face, face of Caesar, they are banished. So he says, I have never, uh, the things that threaten me, the things that threaten me have only seen my back. When they see my face, when they see the face of Caesar, they shall vanish. So it's one of those, you know, bravado kind of a dialogue. You know, jab meri shakal dekhenge, they will all run away. They will disappear. They will vanish. So far, they have only seen the back of Julius Caesar. Calpurnia says, Caesar, I never stood on ceremonies, yet now they frighten me. She says, I have never paid any attention. Ceremonies means omens. You know, any of these omens which have been there, which we've already heard about from Casca in the previous scene. So, uh, this is a reference to omens. Yet, they now frighten me. There is one within besides the things that we have heard and seen recounts most horrid sights seen by the watch. So she is now recounting what has been told to her. She said someone inside that is referring to there is some, one within uh, saying that uh, told me that in addition to the things that we have heard and seen that the night watchman saw some of the most terrifying things. The watch. Okay. The night watchman saw some of the most Terrifying things uh, during the night. Okay. And what are the terrifying things? A lioness has given birth to her cubs on the streets, which is an extremely unnatural uh, kind of a phenomena. Wealth means has given birth and graves have yawned and graves have opened up. Again, something kind of conveying something very sinister, very macabre, something very gory, right? And yielded up their dead and the dead bodies have all come out. Fierce, fiery, fiery warriors fought upon the clouds in ranks and squadrons and right form of war. And she says that fierce and fiery wa warriors, you know, courageous and very fiery kind of warriors fought in the clouds in battle formation. Ranks and squadrons are obviously ranks which are being mentioned and the right form of war. 
so they formed in they fought in battle formation so a very fierce battle was being fought in the clouds by very fiery warriors and they were raining blood down from the sky on the capital so blood was raining down okay the blood was raining down so that is what is being spoken about uh, which drizzled blood upon the capital and the noise of cap battle hurled hurdled in the air okay so she says the noise of battle the sound that was being created as a result of this battle uh, uh, the no the horses were making a noise which is being made the neigh is the sound which the okay the goda the makes the sound that is called the neigh of a horse n e i g h okay and goes shrieked and squeaked on the street so she is kind of describing what she has been told what all different things were being this thing this is the spelling neigh okay uh, this one and dying men did groan okay so uh, you see a uh, dying men did groan again conveys a sense of pain of torture of some kind and goes to shriek and squeal about the streets now this is again something which is all very unnatural kind of acts which uh, is being described by calponia oh caesar these things are beyond all use and i do fear them so she says that this kind of an um, uh, it th 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 these are things which are beyond my experience and therefore i am feeling extremely scared so caesar says who can avoid whose end is decided by the powerful gods what can be avoided whose end is decided by the mighty gods yet caesar shall go forth yet caesar will step out for these predictions are to the world in general as to caesar because these predictions apply as much to the world they are not like specific to julius caesar it can apply to everyone anyone and everyone in this entire world why should i assume that these are meant for me that these are meant for me so while he is superstitious he is also selective in kind of in his own interpretations calpurnia says when beggars die there are no comets seen the heavens themselves blaze for the death of princes so she says when poor people die beggars meaning referring to the poor people when poor people die comets are not seen in the sky she so she is referring to some kind of indicating some knowledge of astronomy that comets are not seen in the sky but the heavens will light up to announce the deaths of princes but when princes die referring to the fact because she has already seen uh, seen something in her dream because she has been talking in her sleep so she has dreamt of the death of caesar so when the princes die the heavens themselves light up to announce that so and so prince has died caesar says cowards die many times before their death so if i am scared that is equivalent to being dead that's what he is trying to say cowards die many times before their deaths the valiant never taste of death but once but the ones who are courageous the ones who are brave they taste they experience death only once jo darpok hai wo kai baar hi you know every time someone is scared he is actually dying it's a form of death but the courageous the ones who are brave they kind of die only once and of all the strange things that i have heard it seems strange to me that man should suffer death of all the wonders that i have yet heard it seems to me more strange that men should be scared of death that death a necessary end will come when it will come because death comes to everyone so why should man really be scared so i find this rather strange he refers to that as strange the servant re enters and then caesar is asking him what did the priest say augurus refers to the men the priests who kind of they are qualified to predict the future based on whatever sacrifice etc has been made and this reinforces the the kind of you know uh, the trend of following these kind of superstitions in rome servant says they do not want you to go out today they do not want you to stir forth you know stir forth means stir means movement of some kind they do not want you to move out of home today so they are actually kind of reinforcing what calipurnia has already told julius caesar plucking the entrails of an offering forth they could not find a heart within the beast when they were uh, when they were uh, sacrificing the animal they found that uh, 
uh, when they pulled out the inside entrails refers to the insides the inside portion of uh, of the animal of the sacrificed animal they could not find a heart which is again yet another very unnatural thing you know how could you have a living being without a heart right so they uh, did not find the heart within the beast caesar said the gods do this in shame of cowardice caesar should be a beast without a heart if he should stay at home today for fear so caesar is continuing with the same kind of a tone he says the gods are doing this in order to shame kayartha in order to shame cowardice any kind of fear they kind of saying you know should be ashamed and which is why they are so his interpretation is different from that of the augurs of the priests so he says they are saying that i should be an animal without a heart if i stayed at home today out of fear if i stayed at home by being scared i would be like an animal without a heart no caesar will not caesar shall not danger knows full well that caesar is more dangerous than he so he is now trying to personify he is personifying danger here so he is saying danger knows that even caesar is actually more dangerous than danger itself okay so he says danger and i and this is a very interesting line okay he says we are two lions littered in one day danger and julius caesar were like two lions who were born on the same day and i am the elder of the two and more terrible and caesar will step out today right so i am more fierce terrible means fierce not in a negative sense but in a more courageous kind of a sense so he says i shall go today so this is an interesting kind of thing which you can use in your answers as keywords as key phrases we are two lions littered in one day referring to himself and danger so he is personifying danger so this is a very interesting and a very well written kind of a passage calpunia says alas my lord your wisdom is consumed in confidence do not go forth today call it my fear that keeps you in the house and not your own so uh, calpunia says alas my lord your confidence has overwhelmed you you are you know you are being very over confident right now she says and that is kind of clouding your wisdom okay consumed is your wisdom has been consumed by your over confidence right so she says do not go out today she says you can call it my fear that i am scared for you right uh, that keeps you that is urging you that is requesting you to stay at home and not go out today she says we will let send mark antony to the senate and say that you are not feeling well today let me beg you right right let me upon my knee so let me kneel before you prevail in this but do not go out today so mark antony relents so she says mark antony uh, will tell the people that i am not well and for just for your sake for keeping you happy i will stay at home so uh, so that's what caesar says that for your sake i am willing to do this at that point in time dcs brutus enters the scene now we have already met him as part of the conspirators so he says oh here is this is brutus he will tell them that i will not be able to come this is brutus says caesar all hail good morrow worthy caesar i come to fetch you i have come to take you to the senate caesar says and you are come at a very happy time to bear my greeting to the senators tell them that i will not come today please go and convey to them that i will not be able to make it today cannot is false actually cannot is not the right word tell them that i dare not fall sir i will not come today tell them so so he says that please go and convey to the people at the senate that you know i do not dare to come and even more false to say that i do not dare to come i simply won't come that's what you should tell them this yes so, you know i simply will not come calpunia says say that he is sick caesar says would caesar send a lie would caesar send a lie would caesar convey to them a lie that he is unwell and therefore not able to come so he is obviously not very amused by what calpunia is telling dcs brutus to say so she shall caesar send a lie this is an important line which again you can use in your answers to kind of convey the kind of stubbornness as when it comes to uh, caesar have i in conquest stretched mine arm so far to be afraid to tell grey beards 
the truth. DCS, go tell them Caesar will not come, right? So he's saying that I have, have I achieved so much in battle. Remember, he has defeated Pompey, he has defeated Pompey's sons. So he said, I have achieved so much in battle, right? That I'm afraid to tell some old men, grey beards, referring to old men, the truth. He says, DCS, go and tell that Caesar will not come. Not that, you know, is, uh, cannot come, but will not come. He says, his most mighty, give me some reason. Otherwise, you know, I will be laughed at when I tell them this reason, you know, so that, you know, lest I be laughed at, lest I, you know, in, just in case I am laughed at when I'm telling them uh, that you will not come. Caesar says, the cause is in my will. He says, the cause is in my will. I will not come. That is enough to satisfy the Senate. So he says, when I say I will not come, that itself is the reason. So you don't really need to kind of, that should be enough to satisfy the Senate. You don't really need to give, provide any other reason. Okay, that's enough to satisfy the Senate. But for your own personal understanding, for your own personal understanding, because I like you, I will tell you that Calpurnia has asked me to stay at home. I will let you know Calpurnia here, my wife stays me at home. She's the one who has asked me to stay at home. She dreamt tonight that she saw my statue, which like a fountain with a hundred spouts did run pure blood. So she says uh, she dreamt that she saw my statue, which was streaming pure blood like a fountain with a hundred spouts, you know, from hundred different kind of openings. It was spouting blood. And many lusty Romans came smiling and did bathe their hands in it. And many happy Romans, lusty means in this case, happy Romans, they came smiling and washed their hands in my blood. Okay, uh, so Calipurnia uh, and this she applies, she's interpreting, apply means interpreting. And these does Calipurnia interpret for warnings that this is some kind of a warning for some kind of an unhappy tragedy which is going to unfold and portents and evils imminent and on her knee hath begged that I will stay at home tonight. So she has kind of pleaded with me on her knees that I should stay at home tonight. So she's thinking that some evil is imminent, is about to happen. Something extremely negative is about to happen. So she's kind of interpreting it like that. It's a portent of evil. Brutus who is quite a clever chap, he says this dream has been completely misinterpreted by your wife, by Calpurnia. Okay, it was actually a good and a lucky vision. So what does it show about Decius Brutus? In case if you get a passage like this, is that he's one, he's able to think on his feet in the sense that he's able to come up with a different interpretation and an interpretation that would convince Caesar very quickly that he's a very cunning kind of a person and he's kind of very resolute. He's very determined that come what may, I will take Caesar to the Senate today, right? So these are the things that is uh, that this particular passage shows about Decius Brutus. So she, he says that this dream has been completely misinterpreted. Amis means it, you have missed out on interpreting it correctly. Okay, that's how you can write it. Uh, you can write it both ways. It was a vision fair and fortunate. It was actually a lucky and a good vision. Your statue spouting blood in many pipes in which so many smiling Romans bathe. Okay signifies that from you the great Rome shall suck reviving blood. It shows it shows that uh, great men will plead with you to give your blood to them as signs of your approval, right? That you will give them blood and that's what, that's how this particular dream should be interpreted. And that great men shall press for tinctures, stains, relics and cognizance. This by Calpurnia's dream is signified. So he, he says, the dream has been interpreted all wrong. It was actually a good and a lucky vision. Your statue, which is spouting fountains of blood as seen by Calpurnia in her dream, uh, in which many smiling and happy Romans bathe, means that you will give great Rome, the kingdom, the empire of Rome, the blood that shall keep it alive. You will be providing it the blood that will keep the greatness of Rome alive. And it means also that great men will will request you, will plead with you, will press for, means plead with you to give your blood to them as signs of your approval. This is what Calpurnia's dream actually meant. Now, tinctures, relics means tokens of different kind. Okay, uh, relic means something to remember a saint by. 
picture is a design or an emblem that is worn on the official dress and cognizance is a mark of distinction. I have written it in the notes also. Okay. So you should remember each one of these words. What do they mean also in this specific context of the Roman Empire? So Caesar says, oh, you have kind of explained it, interpreted it very well, explained it very well. Brutus says, I have. And when you have heard what I can say, I know it now. The Senate have concluded to give this day a crown to mighty Caesar. And let me also tell you that the Senate has decided to give a crown to the mighty Caesar. And if you send across a message, if you shall send them word that you shall will not come, their minds may change. They may change their mind and may decide not to give you the crown. So he's playing again. This is also important. He's playing on the weakness of Caesar because Caesar does desire the crowd, right? So he says their minds may change if you say you will not come today. Besides, if were a mock apt to be rendered for someone to say, break up the Senate till another time when Caesar's wife shall meet with better dreams. So he says someone may, someone may decide to make fun of Calpurnia's dream, right? They may actually joke, mock means to joke, uh, uh, adjourn the Senate, ki Senate ko tab tak ke liye kharis kar do, kharij kar do, yani ki, uh, you know, adjourn the Senate, you know, let the Senate not meet till Caesar's wife has seen some nice dream. So they may make fun of Calpurnia's dream, uh, though Caesar has only told him, he's telling it for his benefit, but uh, Brutus is behaving as though he will go and disclose it to everyone. And he has said that you just say Caesar will not come, but Brutus is behaving as though he will tell everyone that he's not coming because his wife saw some terrible dream, right? So he says they may make fun and say that let's adjourn the Senate till Caesar's wife sees some better dreams. So he says, if Caesar hides himself, won't they whisper? If Caesar hides himself, won't they whisper? Shall they not whisper? Lo, Caesar is afraid. Pardon me, Caesar, for my dear, dear love to our proceeding bids me tell you this and reason uh, to my love is liable. So he says that if Caesar hides himself, won't they whisper? Caesar is afraid. The word will go around that Julius Caesar is actually a coward. He's scared of his death. So excuse me, Caesar, my love and desire for your advancement, for your proceeding makes me tell you all this because I think you want you should come there and get the crown where you're going to be crowned king by the Senate. My love for you is stronger than my manners, right? Therefore, I dare to say this to you. Okay, so that's what he's saying. So Caesar says, how foolish do your fears seem now, Calpurnia? So Cal Caesar has changed his mind. So you realize that, you know, he's, he, I mean, it's easy to convince Caesar. So he says, how foolish do your fears now sound? I'm ashamed I did yield to them. I'm, I'm embarrassed that I actually listened to you. Give me my robe. I will go. And at that point in time, Publius, Brutus, Ligarius, Metellus, Casca, Trebonius and Sina, all of them entered the scene. And look where Publius is come to fetch me. So now see that even Publius has come to fetch me. And then he says, oh, what Brutus? You are uh, up very early. Good morrow, Casca. Uh, Ligarius, Caesar was never so much your enemy. And to Ligarius, he says, Caesar was not your enemy. So he's trying to kind of mend fences, right? So he says, Caesar was never your enemy as much as this egg, egg as ague, that is your fever, which has made you lean. You know, it's your fever, which is your enemy because it has made you look so lean and weak. Caesar was not your enemy enemy. He says, what is the clock? Caesar says it has struck, uh, Buddha says it has struck eight. I thank you for your pains and courtesy. And that time Mark Antony enters. See Antony that revels long or night. Look Antony who is all the time kind of, you know, celebrating all the night, uh, all through the night. He stays up all through the night. He's also awake. So he says, so to the most uh, uh, Caesar, good morning. Bid them prepare within. I am to blame to be thus waited for. Now Sina, now Mitilus, what Trebonius? I have an hour stock in store for you. These are not very important, they're just kind of small talk. Remember that you call on me today, but be near me that I may remember you. So he says, remember to meet me today, stay near uh, while I uh, kind of, uh, um, so that I will remember. Uh, and Trebonius, this is very interesting because Trebonius is one of the conspirators. So he's telling Trebonius that you stay close to me. So and in an aside, Trebonius says, Caesar, I will. And then he says, in an aside and so near I will be that your best friend shall wish I had, I had been further, right? So that your best friends would wish that I had been further away. 
that I should not have been near you. Your best friends later on, like a Mark Antony would wish that I was never closer to you. I should have been far away. But that's how close I will be to you today. Jesus says, good friends go in and taste some wine with me. And we like friends will straight away go together. Brutus in an aside. Now this is important that every like is not the same. O Caesar, the heart of Brutus earns to think upon. So uh, Brutus says that we are now only like friends because he says like friends. We are all friends, whether it's Trebonius, Ligeria, Sina, Casca, Brutus, everyone, right? We like friends. So he says every we, that the fact that we are only like friends makes my heart grieve Caesar when I think of it because he is now thinking about what is going to happen. And at that stage, he's by thinking of what's going to happen, he feels sad because Caesar's words are like friends. He calls them friends. So it makes Brutus sad to feel that he and the other conspirators might, must act like friends. They need to act like friends of Caesar before they kill him, right? This is therefore an important line in the characterization of Brutus, okay? With this, we come to the end of Act 2, Scene 2, because it shows us a lot of important things about Caesar. It shows us a lot of important things about Decius Brutus and also Calpurnia. So from the point of view of these three characters and the last lines of Brutus, this particular scene is important. So focus on that so that you are able to uh, handle any passage that comes, any reference to context that comes from this particular scene. Uh, now this has one of the minor characters, Artemi Dorus. He's reading a paper. Now who is he? Now, he is a teacher and a diviner, someone who can predict the future. Uh, in real life, there was a person by this name, interestingly, but not during Julius Caesar, the real Julius Caesar's time. Uh, but he's not the soothsayer who we met in Act 1. So don't get confused there. So he is reading aloud a letter that he has written to Julius Caesar. He says, and this is, he is reading out what he has written. Caesar, beware of Brutus. He's asking him to be wary of Brutus because he can see the future take heed of cassius that is again be careful do not come anywhere near casca have an eye keep an eye on sina these are all the conspirators trust not definitely do not trust trebonius mark well you know keep an eye mark out where mitilus cimber is standing decius brutus does not love you thou have wronged ligarius that you were wrong as far as Ligarius was concerned, you did not treat him well. All these men, there is only one thought in all these men and it is bent against Caesar and it is opposed to you. If thou beest not immortal, look about you. Security gives way to conspiracy. The mighty gods defend thee, thy lover, Artemidurus. So this is a letter that he has written to Caesar, which he is reading before he can send it. So he says that all these men, share only one thought and that thought is against Julius Caesar. So if you are not immortal, be careful. Look around you means be careful. There is an unwanted sense of security that makes you vulnerable to conspiracy because he says like friends, we are all friends. So you, you are feeling that you are safe in the company of these so-called friends, but they are anything but friends and that is making you vulnerable susceptible to a conspiracy that you can be killed by these so-called friends right because you are feeling very secure in their company at this point in time so uh, it also shows that caesar's uh, feeling of trust feeling of friendship with all these people made him actually vulnerable to the conspiracy vulnerable to being killed uh, he says may the gods protect you your friend artemidorus here will I stand till Caesar shall pass along and I as a suitor will I give him this. So while Caesar passes along this way, I will stand here until Caesar passes by and I will give it to him like a suitor means like a petitioner, like a petitioner gives to a king. My heart laments that virtue cannot live uh, out of the teeth of emulation. If thou reads this, O Caesar, thou mayest leave. If not, the fates with traitors do contrive. Contrive means to conspire, to conspire, to kill. So he says, my heart is sad. That virtue and goodness, virtue and you know a sense of being good cannot survive the bite of jealousy. If someone is jealous and jealousy bites you, the, the goodness also cannot survive. The goodness will also collapse. 
with the because of the bite of the teeth of emulation the bite of jealousy okay uh, if you read this caesar you may live if you do not if you read this letter where i am warning you against all these half a dozen conspirators you may actually live but if you do not happen to read this letter which i hope to give you as a petitioner then the fates are on the sides of the traitors now what is this reference to the fates now in classical greek mythology fates are the three goddesses who directed human destiny they were the ones who directed what will happen to each man and woman on earth so they were the fates the fates of god the goddesses of fate so that's what is being referred to out here so with that we come to the end of act 2 scene 3 let's move on to scene 4 these are two small scenes another part of the same street before the house of brutus okay portia enters portia is who portia is the wife of brutus what shakespeare has not showed us is the fact that portia has been told by brutus about the conspiracy that is going to unfold at the senate so she is aware of what is going to happen so even though shakespeare doesn't show us through the scene we come to know that brutus has in fact reveal to portia what is going to happen so portia is telling lucius go to the senate house don't stand here to answer me but get the gone why, why are you still around here so uh, he says to know what i have to do portia says i would have had thee there and here again before i can tell you what thou should do here so i want you to kind of uh, want you here and back before even i can tell you what you should do here so she says oh constancy refers to will power oh will power be strong upon my side so she's kind of trying to summon all the courage right be strong so that i do not say what i know in my heart right set a huge mountain between my heart and tongue between my heart and tongue set a mountain so that i do not say what i so that i do not reveal what i am already aware of i have a man's mind but a woman's strength how difficult it is for women to keep secrets counsel means secret so she says so it is here we come to know that portia has been told by brutus about the plot even though it does not it's not shown on stage lucius says what should i do run to the capital and nothing else and so return to you and nothing else you know please be clear what i am mean. because you see portia is talking in very muddled thing the two characters calpurnia and portia the two women characters i wouldn't say that they are very strong characters but they are very integral to the plot because they kind of show some kind of a mirror they kind of convey a sense of fear they kind of convey a sense of realism to the entire setting because here are men who are overcome by ambition of different kinds you know you may have a brutus who may want to do it for the sake of rome uh, he may think that caesar is not good for rome you have a cassius who is kind of completely consumed by jealousy because of which he is doing this to caesar so everyone has different motivations right uh, but the women characters are kind of the epitome of what should be the right thing to do both calpurnia and portia much more right what should be the right thing to do which is what they are following uh, that's what we know so far so she says run to the capital and nothing else and so return to you okay portia says yes bring me word boy if thy lord look well if your lord that is brutus is looking fine for he went when he went he was kind of not feeling very well sickly for and take good note what caesar does and please make a note of what julius caesar does at the senate what suitors press to him hark boy what noise is that so she says pay attention to what caesar does and who are standing close to him because brutus has told him and then she says what noise is that she says i he, lucius says i don't hear anything he says portia says listen carefully because i hear a bustling rumor like a fray and the wind brings it from the capital so now she says i'm hearing a loud noise bustling rumor like a fight as though a fight has broken out in the senate the wind is bringing that noise from the capital so she is kind of imagining perhaps which lucius is not able to hear he says i hear nothing at that point in time the soothsayer enters the scene okay the act one scene to soothsayer he says come hither fellow which way hath thou been so sir at my own house good lady what is the clock is is about the ninth hour portia is caesar yet gone to the capital so sir says madam not yet i go to stake my stand to see him pass on the way to the capital he says you have some suit to caesar has thou not yet yeah, that i have if it will please caesar now here it is being this thing that he also has a message to convey to julius caesar 
to be so good to Caesar as to hear me, I shall beseech him to befriend himself. So he says that uh, that I am going to stand there so that I can pass, so that I can see him pass on the way to capital. She says, you have some message to give to Caesar. He says, yes, I do. If it pleases Caesar to do himself the favor of listening to me, I will plead with him to do what is good for him, for him, not for Rome, but for him. Portia says, why do you know of anything, any harm that is intended? So she's trying to probe that whether the soothsayer knows something which she's also aware of, but whether he's aware or not. Soothsayer says, nothing that I know for sure, but there will be, a, there is a lot that I fear may happen. Chance. So he says, none that I know will be, much that I fear may chance. That could happen. Good morrow to you. Here the street is narrow. The throng that follows Caesar at the heels of senators, of praetors, praetors as in the magistrate, common suitors will crowd a feeble man almost to death. So, you know, it will be very difficult for me to stand here. They will almost choke me to death because there is so much of a crowd to see Julius Caesar. I will find myself a place that is more empty. Void means which is more empty and there speak to great Caesar as he comes along and he exits. Portia says, I must go in. A me, how weak a thing the heart of woman is. Oh, Brutus, the heavens speed thee in thine enterprise. So she says, a woman's heart is so weak. Oh, Brutus, may the gods help. You in your efforts, thine enterprise, surely the boy heard me. So she's kind of wanting the good of Brutus, but she's also concerned about what will really unfold at the Senate. Run Lucius and commend me to my Lord and say, I am merry. Come to me again and bring me word what he doth say to thee. So he say, she says, Brutus uh, uh, has a suit which Lucius uh, will not grant. He has a suit. In the sense that he has a claim that Caesar will not grant. Oh, I am feeling very weak. So she's trying to kind of, you know, justify so that Lucius does not feel suspicious. I am feeling very weak. Lucius, run and give my wishes to my husband. Tell him that I am happy and come back to me and tell me what he says to you. Okay. So she wants to know almost minute to minute what is happening at the Senate and which is why she's giving those kind of directions to Lucius. So uh, this is the stage. So a lot happens to Portia in the later latter half of the play okay which you will see in next year in class 10 which is very interesting though even though she's not one of the major characters she's an important character because she kind of the element of fear that she reflects makes her an important character the element of apprehension that she reflects makes her an important character in julius caesar the play see you now in act 3 which will be in class 10 tada bye bye